Hey everyone, Coach K here. Welcome to the first video in our more in-depth blockchain and cryptocurrency series. Here we're really going to address what Bitcoin actually is. After this video, you should be able to answer that with confidence even to your grandma. Without moving too slowly, let's dive right in. Fat kiddle, fat, fat kiddle. Welcome back to Coach K here, guys. So today we're going to talk about how does Bitcoin work? Basically, why would you care about Bitcoin? What's the point? It's the first cryptocurrency, right? Distributed ledger technology was invented by David Schwartz 20 years ago, um, and Bitcoin was created 10 years after that um, by Satoshi Nakamoto, which I've, I've told you no one really knows who it is, which keeps it very decentralized because we don't have a central authority. Even the person who created it, we don't know who they are. What Bitcoin does is it allows us to send peer to peer. And why is that important? Because usually we have to send it you know, with a third party overseeing it. But now if I want to send Joel to, you know, Serbi, I can send him directly from my Bitcoin wallet to his. And instead of it going through the bank and then processing it and authorizing it and taking three days, it will take a few minutes. And with some coins, even a few seconds. So how does this all work? Well, basically a sender and a receiver. So Joel is a sender, Serbi is a receiver. I send him the crypto, I send him Bitcoin, right? So what happens is it goes through the mining network through confirmations. So basically all these computers say, yep, Joel was going to send that, that crypto to Serbi. Joel's sending that crypto to Serbi. Joel's sending, and then eventually it gets sent to Serbi and everyone says, yes, these are, this is a real transaction. Then like I've shown you before in other videos, it makes a block and it goes in the blockchain and it's forever there. So now Serbi has the cash. Okay, so in money transfer services, there's third party, right? So I want to send it to someone. So the bank, I have to send it through a money transfer service to go to an exchange, then go to other person's bank. So it's a long process, which takes days, which is where uh, a lot of other cryptocurrencies that I'll tell you about will also benefit um, in terms of payment systems. Let's give you a visual how it works. So basically it's open source. Anyone can basically see the network, which is awesome because it's public and it's distributed, meaning you can upload the blockchain on your computer and see all the transactions. So if someone said they sent you something and they didn't, you will easily see that. No one can say, oh, the bank, no, <laughs> it's on the blockchain. It's immutable. It's there or it's not. And so because of all this and having computers basically verify transactions by mining or doing staking for some coins, basically we don't need a central authority. It's decentralized, meaning that many different nodes or computers can verify transactions without the need of a government saying that's a good transaction. Coded, algorithm. And so with that algorithm, if anything changes, then basically it will say no and you can't do that and be added to the, ne to the next block and it will reject that transaction. Same as if you try to change that transaction later. So the reason why you should care about Bitcoin, it's faster and cheaper payments. You know, you can send in minutes instead of sending over a long period of time. The fees are also a lot lower, even though Bitcoin has, you know, has had fees that are higher in the past. There's been some changes and they're not as high anymore. And there's other coins that if you want to send them that are even cheaper too. Um, financial inclusion. So all these people that are unbanked, they can't get a bank account. Now, all of a sudden they can get a bank on their phone. They can get a wallet, a Bitcoin wallet, and they can actually store cash on their phone or cryptocurrencies on their phone or digital assets on their phone. So now they do not need to worry about having a uh, cash in a bank asset so that which they don't have the access to. Another thing is your privacy. So basically Bitcoin makes it harder for people to know unless they know your Bitcoin address, it's harder for them to track. Now they can do that. They can track Bitcoin addresses, but it's hard for them to do it. And so, um, you know, it's a little bit more secure. They also can't freeze your accounts either with crypto. So in Bit with Bitcoin, they can't have the government come and freeze your account. It's not possible. So yeah, your blockchain address, your public ID is there, but your face is not there. Okay, so no one knows who you are. Now, blockchain technology, basically, you know, it makes, it has a lot of other benefits other than just using Bitcoin, for example. And we'll talk about more of that later, but basically blockchain technology, thinking about distributed ledgers uh, for payments, think about it for um, accounting, think about it for record keeping and et cetera, et cetera, that you don't want to change. So let's say an evidence log from, you know, a criminal court case. Well, you know, sometimes evidence goes missing. Well, that can't happen on a blockchain if it's stored there. 
you'll know who came in, what time, when they accessed the evidence, everything is located on the blockchain, you can see all that. And because of that, it will keep the system more honest. Same as what we've seen um, in elections lately with uh, all these things about fraud or like uh, people losing votes all of a sudden. With blockchain, you can't, it's impossible, it's immutable. So if you did blockchain elections, it's another example of it. So these are all things that started off from Bitcoin and it's got first mover advantage and that's why it's the number one. And it may not always be the number one, but what it's become is because of its scarcity, it doesn't only has 21 million ever that they'll ever create and it gets scarcer and scarcer. So it's deflationary. So basically people see it as a store of value. So that's one of its main use cases, a store of value. There's going to be more and more use cases as it goes on, but that's basically what Bitcoin is. The whole idea of the first part was, you know, you can send peer to peer without needing a bank. And that's the main premise behind decentralized networks is you don't need a bank or a government to be an authority. And so that is what Bitcoin is. Coach K, sign up. Fat kiddle, fat, fat kiddle, fat kiddle, huge fat kiddle.